So welcome back to my project box. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it seems Christmas has come a little early for me this year. Sonoff sent me a little gift. This is a, a TRV, but a Zigbee enabled one. So it's a smart uh, radiator um, control valve. Um, so this is really interesting. I don't normally do unboxing videos, but um, I thought it'd be interesting just to take a look to see what's inside the box. This is quite a sexy little device, so we'll do a slow reveal for those of you who like the sound of plastic sliding off of things. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite nice. So it comes with uh, all the usual instructions and, and things. We'll take a look at that a bit later, or not. Um, and it also comes with all the different adapters. So we have a little bag full of uh, valve adapters. I don't think I need any of these. Mine's like a standard uh, TRV. So mine will just go straight on. So yeah, exciting stuff. Uh, join me and then uh, we'll try it out. So it's that time of year again. It's getting colder. And uh, we're all trying to save money on um, our ever more expensive heating bills. Um, so Sonoff sent me one of these uh, snazzy Zigbee enabled TRV valves, thermostatic uh, radiator valves. So what we'll do is um, we'll try and pop this Take this one off and put this one on and see how this would work. This would enable us to be able to um, turn the radiator on and off um, remotely and schedule it and do all sorts of things. So a great little thing to possibly save us a bit of money. So what we'll do is um, we'll take the old valve off and uh, we'll press the battery compartment. And we'll pop some batteries in it. I will um, I'll use rechargeable batteries for this. Now I think it goes into... Yeah, it drives the pin back. So it makes it easy to screw onto there. So we'll put the uh, battery compartment back on. The lid back on and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll screw it in place so far pretty simple and then I think we need to press it to make it go into add mode and it drives the actuator up and down till it makes contact with the pin and sort of finds its place and um, then um, it now has, it now controls the valve via the temperature setting. And uh, what you need to do is, is turn it to off and then press the, that's it, you hold it in for a little while and then it goes into pairing mode. And um, then we can pair it to a uh, Zigbee bridge. Uh, in my case, it's a Sonoff Zigbee bridge, but I believe, um, there are other Zigbee 3.0 devices like the Echo Dot from Amazon or various other Zigbee enabled devices that can control it directly. Um, but are we, we're just going to go through the eWeLink app and uh, follow the setup instructions. But um, I'm not a big fan of uh, battery operated devices. And I know these ones are rechargeable and they'll probably last the whole season. Um, but uh, what I would like to do is make a batteryless um, hack for this. So we have dummy batteries that make contact with the connectors and we try and power it off a um, USB phone charger on a socket outlet nearby. That way we never have to worry about batteries ever again. And um, you just use a relatively good quality USB phone charger, one of these um, 5 volt output devices. And uh, because this operates on three uh, AA batteries, which is about 4.5 volt, um, if we use a diode, we can drop half a volt. So we can make a very simple no no battery hack, um, batteryless adapter that goes 
makes and makes contact with the um, the battery terminals inside. So I'll show you how I did that. Now I'm not a huge fan of um, battery operated devices uh, for obvious reasons. Really, when the, ba the the batteries tend to go flat at the worst possible time when you don't expect it. I assume these would last a season, but um, I would prefer it if I would never have to worry about the batteries. So I, I like mains operated devices more. So what I was thinking of doing is um, taking out these batteries, even though they're rechargeable and I could just take them out and recharge them, but that's a hassle I don't really want to deal with. So what I was thinking is um, I can take some of these old um, zinc carbon batteries, really cheap and nasty batteries, and um, I can just empty them out. And then I just have this empty tube, uh, just a little zinc metal tube. And these will be dummy batteries. Uh, they're just going to be spacers uh, to connect to this terminal and this terminal here, which is the, the two, uh, um, the positive and the, the main positive and the main negative terminal. So we could just sort of space and connect in there. Um, and of course, you can solder onto zinc quite easily. So uh, we just uh, have our 4.5 volt power supply, which we can easily get um, from a uh, any standard uh, USB phone charger, USB style phone charger. And I was thinking of just using a diode to drop more or less a half a volt, so it kind of matches the battery voltage here. And it's it's a really simple way of doing it. Um, you can buy dummy batteries to connect to terminals like this. Um, there's nothing new about that. They're very cheap to buy as well. But I thought I'd give it a go since I have some um, old spent batteries anyway. And uh, it's quite easy to open them up. And uh, I'll just gut them. I'll just get rid of the um, the electrolyte inside, which is uh, on zinc batteries quite harmless. Um, it's fairly benign. And uh, we'll just empty it out. And uh, we'll have our dummy battery spacers to connect to the terminals. The other option is, is of course we could just solder straight on there but I would like it to be fully reversible so we can still put our batteries in in the future if I'd, if I'd like to. So I started by peeling back the plastic wrapper off of the battery and then with a small screwdriver popped out the positive pin terminal and then um, it reveals the uh, carbon rod which can be e easily pried out using uh, pliers and then there's some um, plastic uh, spacer washers um, that can be pulled out with a pair of pliers. Now um, the electrolyte powder I think it's manganese dioxide it can just be rinsed out and I use a little wooden dowel stick and it rinses out quite easily with a bit of washing up liquid and there's some paper spacers that come out as well. And then just clean it up with a washing up sponge afterwards. So now that we have this empty metal tube, uh, it'd be nice to cap off this side so it's not it's not hollow anymore. Um, so I was going to solder um, a little metal cap on there, but I think an easier way to do it would be just to um, scrunch up a little bit of aluminium foil and just make a, a plug that goes in there. Let me just squash it down and that's it uh, pretty much capped off it's just so that the spring has something to push against inside the battery holder it'll be just fine to make the dummy battery complete now of course a normal double air battery has a little raised pin at the top um, of the positive terminal so to make that, we'll add a bit of uh, liquid flux and we'll build it up with a little solder blob in stages by adding little bits of solder at a time and that'll make um, the right shape sort of pin we need at the top. And of course now we need to find a way to connect power to these dummy batteries. So you simply take an old USB cable like this one. This one's a, a bit worn out. <clears throat> and we just clip the end off here. And we strip the wire back a bit.
and um, these thinner wires they would most likely be the data and uh, I assume the lighter one is positive and negative we'll confirm that by putting power on it in a minute and you'll just clip the data wires really short I will strip these back And I think we'll run a bit of solder across them. And we can cut them a bit shorter. And now if we take a, a USB power bank, um, we can plug our USB socket into the USB power bank, that way we can have a 5 volt supply to test. So this seems to be the, um, the positive. So the grey colour is the negative and the sort of browny colour is the positive. There you go, there's our 5 volts. And we can drop half a volt with the diode. And it should be spot on. So these two are bridged together. And I assume these two are bridged together. And there's no bridge here. Which this would be the main positive battery terminal. And there's no bridge here. Which would make that one the main negative battery terminal. So that's, we need a connection to there for battery positive or our positive supply voltage and this will be our negative supply voltage that we need to connect to somehow. Now even though these tubes are connecting to both the upper and lower terminals, it doesn't matter since we're only trying to connect to one of them and the others go effectively nowhere. Um, we don't have to isolate one side of the battery, we can have it just go straight through we only worried about it making contact with the one side. Since we don't have the center battery connected, the other terminals go effectively nowhere. So it doesn't matter if it connects to them. Now the diode voltage drop is fairly constant, but it does depend on the load connected. So if we give it a slight load with the resistor, we can ensure that we get a fairly constant voltage drop. It probably isn't necessary to add a resistor as a load, um, but we're doing it as a formality anyway. I think it is a good idea. We, we want to make sure that we get a fairly constant 0 0.6 volt or half a volt drop. Now we'll add a 4.7k resistor just to act as a bit of a load. That just poses a slight load to make sure that we're dropping about uh, half a volt, 0 0.6, 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 volt. I guess this would operate fine on 5 volts, but we want to keep close to uh, the operating voltage of um, uh, three um, 1.5 volt AA batteries. So uh, let's power it up and uh, let's see what voltage we get. So we're getting 4.45. That's pretty good. Now all that's left to do is we need to cut a little slot here in the plastic so the cable can sit neatly underneath the cover. And we'll make the slot kind of small so it wedges the cable in there. So it looks kind of neat when it's all closed up. So let's give that a try. We'll use... Um, this little Dremel style rotary tool. Looks good to me. So let's put the lid back on. And there you go. 
full batteryless hack. No batteries required. And um, she's definitely working. Right, uh, time to give it a real world test. So we'll take our USB uh, phone charger. And this is an Amazon charger. And um, we'll get our 5 volt supply from there by plugging our USB cable straight into there. And see if our valve power powers up, and it does. So um, we'll now try and put it on the radiator and see if it works. Of course, um, if you have one of those uh, newer USB style socket outlets where the USB ports are built into the socket, that's even better. It frees up your socket outlet because you can just plug this straight into one of the USB ports. So um, I have a couple of those, but uh, this socket is close to my radiator, which is really convenient. So um, I've checked and the pin is driven all the way back. So we'll screw it on. should go through its uh, add procedure where it drives the actuator up and down until it makes contact with the valve and then uh, we simply pair the device and it's in pairing mode and then once that's paired up um, it should work just fine um, it's possible to turn the valve around so that uh, this cable is hidden behind the radiator. But uh, that seems to work great. We have a full-on um, battery eliminator hack. No battery needed. So we've linked it all up uh, via the Zigbee Hub, uh, Zigbee Bridge, and the eWeLink app, which is also linked to Google Home. So we'll see if we have voice control. Get the display back on. Set the bedroom thermostat to 28 degrees. All right, setting the bedroom radiator to 28 degrees. That works a treat. Excellent. Right, so uh, this cable can be tucked away neatly, and uh, we have a battery eliminator hack, no battery required. So, in conclusion, this little um, valve actuator. Um, that uh, Sonoff sent me for my radiator um, seems like a really nice little device um, I'm really happy with it um, I will leave a link in the description and a coupon code if you're interested in getting some of these um, I assume if you did this uh, no battery hack um, it's probably going to void your warranty but it's entirely up to you if you want to do that um, but it was a lot of fun doing it and um, that's it for this video, guys. Um, I'll hope to see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.